everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game News. It is November 16th, 2020 and these are the top stories of the day. To kick things off, yes, this is a picture of me at one of my E3s that I've been to over the years, standing next to the late and great Mr. Satoru Iwata and the equally great Shigeru Miyamoto. Pictured right here specifically, this is Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto. And the reason why I'm highlighting this photo today is because it's Mr. Miyamoto's birthday. So happy 68th birthday to the man behind Mario, Donkey Kong, The Legend of Zelda, and who has had such an impact in the video game industry. From ideas behind the Wii, console designs, integrating gaming like never before with the likes of Super Mario 64 and developing 3D camera angles and being a part of the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time team that incorporated Z-targeting for the first time that would be used in pretty much every third-person perspective video game to date since 1998 and just an all-around really nice individual every time we've met over the years the first time early 2000s like 2002 to the last time being 1999 so over the 17 year span that I've met Mr. Miyamoto he's always pleasant to talk to he never rushes we've had some good times all good times have taken plenty of pictures together this is one of my favorites and yeah quite a person who has had an impact on the industry you know you just look at some of the franchises and you think Pikmin as being one of the newer ones that he has been behind, you know? And you look at the man's willingness to experiment and go beyond with things like the custom robot building title that never technically came out for Wii U, but just a toy creator, an inventor, you know? never wanting to stay stagnant necessarily. Has plenty of established IP, yes, but even in the later years of development, though we may not see IP of his as often introduced, you know, in terms of something new, still thinking of ideas. His efforts are still being used at Nintendo and integrated in their software. Titles that come out that have other lead producers, other lead developers, on top of them these days still have a bit of Mr. Miyamoto touch behind them you know he's a very well respected person in the industry like I said very kind individual to me so I appreciate him and I certainly hope to see Mr. Miyamoto have plenty more successful titles that he's either a small part in creating or maybe even one or two final new IPs that the man delivers um, in the coming years I hope he never retires, but you know, being 68 years old, if retirement you know happens within the next seven years, I could understand. Maybe job shift, but still working at Nintendo in some capacity, lesser role, but still, you know, giving us his presence because he's very unique, and I don't think he will ever be quite replicated. So, a little bit of a backstory on our interactions and a little bit of knowledge that you probably already know about of the man and of the titles that he's developed and whatnot including some projects that never came out but still you know thinking always thinking of new ideas new methods of control new ways to incorporate technology and make games wrapped around that and still playing a vital role in the industry from a senior management perspective so Happy birthday, Mr. Miyamoto. Thank you very much for the kind times that you've given me over the years. Moving on in video game news, some more traditional gaming news. We have an update from Microsoft regarding the Xbox acquisition of Bethesda. And the Microsoft CEO, Satya, mentioned to us today that it's not in Xbox's intention of holding hostage, if you will, Bethesda's titles, you know? You look at this list, Paul Gale Network mentioned it, 
you know, a couple of months ago when Microsoft announced this acquisition, less than two months ago, really. Dishonored, Wolfenstein, The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Starfield, The Evil Within, Prey, some pretty heavy hitters in there, all officially under the Xbox umbrella. They don't need to put their games on anything else. They will still honor some existing contracts in bringing out, you know, future Bethesda titles that are coming within the next year-ish on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, etc. But beyond that, they don't have to. They could keep Doom, they could keep Elder Scrolls as exclusive Xbox titles. But like I said, with Satya's update to us today, we learned that they're not going to hold it hostage, but they're going to do what's in the best interest of Xbox to make the Xbox version the most attractive. It could be coming out first for the Xbox Series S and X, and then later, you know, have a staggered release six months later be released on the Nintendo Switch, another six months later be released on the PlayStation 5. Microsoft gets to have its cake and eat it too, you know? They get to have heavy hitters, and that's kind of what I expected, you know, from the start was there's a lot of money to be left on the table and not in the bank if they only had the titles on their systems. It would bring in more people to buy you know, an Xbox platform. It would make more people sign up for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, but would it necessarily equate to as many people that are going to uh, already buy a PlayStation or a Nintendo? Probably not. But Microsoft could definitely have the best of both worlds here. Release the games first from these series of titles on the Xbox Series S and X, and for that matter, Xbox One in the coming future, last couple of titles perhaps, and then stagger the, the releases out. If I had a guess, I'd say you'd want to distance Microsoft speaking, if I were them, you would want to distance your release far enough ahead of the PlayStation 5 release, you know, because those systems are more comparable in their ecosystems, their setup, their raw hardware spec for spec. The Nintendo one is still competition technically at the end of the day, but it serves a different market. You know, people know that they're not going to get as high fidelity visuals from, you know, uh, Doom 3, if you want to call it that, or Wolfenstein 3 on the Nintendo Switch Plus as you would on the Xbox Series X. You know, people want it for that. It's good graphics, but it's also portable, and I like that. That's not to say release it the same date and date because you don't want to compete too much with you know your own Xbox version, but several months later, spark up a new interest, not really eat into your sales. And then later on, the PS5. If people know going in, I don't know which system to pick. Ah, what I'm learning now as these games are being announced in the future that they're going to come out you know 12 months from now on PS5, but next month on Xbox Series X, if someone's big enough of a Doom fan and they don't have either system yet, and the majority third-party lineup looks the same, and they don't really have a ton of loyalty to, you know, Halo, Gears of War, or Uncharted, God of War, this might be what makes people shift to Xbox camp. Hard to say, but it's interesting hearing, you know, updates regardless here and there. And I thought I would share that with you because it's pretty exciting. I'm very interested in seeing what comes from this Bethesda deal. Moving along, I'm pretty happy for this. You know, this is Alana Pierce, former IGN editor. You have probably seen her on YouTube in the last few years. She's got a great channel with over 500,000 views. Uh, we met and had a nice chat, quick, but took a cool picture together. Uh, at E3 a couple of years ago, and I like Alana. She announced today, Hi everyone, I'm finally allowed to announce my new job as a video game writer at Sony Santa Monica, who you probably, as the studio, probably know as the studio, meant to say, who makes God of War. I am so, so proud to be a part of this incredible team. You know, good for her. I like that. Boom. There you go. <laughs> That's really awesome, you know. Uh, she's done a great job in developing a big brand for herself and has a strong engagement on YouTube and on Twitter, 
on Instagram and so forth. So this is pretty cool. I always support good people, so it's nice to see good people uh, reach success, and sometimes that success takes them to you know, different areas of the video game industry. You could have somebody that's on the writing side that goes into development, someone who's on the development side that you know, goes into the journalistic approach. So uh, that's cool, but regardless, congratulations, Alana. I'm proud of you. Keep up the good work, and I hope that your time at Sony Santa Monica is the best position you've had yet in anything video game related. Keep up the good work. And I hope that you still have YouTube content because I do enjoy seeing your personality and your take on video games. So to the best of everything for you going forward. Next up, I announced before that the Super Mario 3D All-Stars 1.1.0 update would allow you to invert camera controls in Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy, including, you know, Flood's own controls and Sunshine in particular. But what we also got today, which is pretty sweet, is the ability to use the GameCube controller officially with the game and replicate Super Mario Sunshine's original control scheme. I think that's pretty cool. I wonder if this was from fan hopes and comments and stuff like that, that that's what Nintendo, that's what made Nintendo decide to, you know, patch this in, or was this a part of their plan from the get-go? Makes me wonder just how powerful are fans' words and how much is Nintendo willing to continue modifying this package. For instance, they surely know that so many of us would love to see Super Mario 64 go widescreen, right? Could that be in the makings in the near future? Hmm. Hard to say. Wishful thinking. Wouldn't necessarily put money on it, but still, regardless, a GameCube controller support option is pretty sweet. And finally in the video game news today, oh boy, this one's a doozy. There was a major Capcom leak, and the way it was done was pretty nasty. Um, Capcom had a massive cyber hack. Folks on the dark web got into the company, held this information for ransom, put it up, and later on claimed that Capcom refused to pay the amount of money to privatize this information and not release it publicly. So they did, and this information included um, launch plans for Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil 8. A lot of employees are affected, up to 350,000 potentially. You know, information regarding Monster Hunter Stories 2 and Monster Hunter Rise was leaked. Future titles were leaked. Um, not not the most pleasant scenario for Capcom to be in, you know. Money was talked about regarding, you know, how much was Capcom paid by specific companies to have, you know, exclusivity for a time release or a certain portion of a game be only on their platform. If you're wondering, well, how come you're not giving me specifics? You know, I do enjoy talking about what else, what's going on in the video game industry. You know, I'm not against putting up rumors, uh, talking about leaks, but this was in such a foul way, you know? This wasn't like, when I've received rumors before, when I've received information from various friends, from various contacts in the industry, it was a person giving me information and allowing me, even though if it wasn't an official like company, mm, here's the authorization, give it to Paul Gale Network to talk about it. It was a friend working within a company that gave me permission to, here, talk about this game, talk about this rumor, talk about this title that I'm giving you. Sometimes some sources weren't necessarily from a company themselves, but from elsewhere adjacent to, and some are correct, some aren't, unfortunately. That's the name of the game. So I'll talk about that, but this was a direct attack on Capcom. So that's why I'm, you know, briefly talking about what were some of the topics that were leaked out, but not necessarily revealing to you, oh, 
this is the release date of this, this is the release date of this, this is exactly the amount of money that so and so paid Capcom to have blank, and these are the titles that are, you know, a part of the report because it's just a dirty way in which it was found. And that's illegal in nature. You know, it's different from having a source, having a friend that tells you. Even some people are like, I don't even like that, you know? But everyone's got to draw the line at some point on what they want to talk about based off of how they acquired the information, maybe, you know? So if you want to find out, it's not that difficult, you know? I'm announcing it today because it's news. I'm just not deep diving into it. But like I said, easy to find out. You could Google search it and see Capcom Lake. Now, me saying that right now, how is that any better than me talking about it? Well, I'm announcing the news. I'm not telling you the specific news. Some may say that's no different than talking about it in the first place, but to me, that is where I will report it, tell you that it's able to be found. Not like that that's that difficult to find out in the first place. So I'm not really pointing you in an exact location, but you know it's kind of ob obvious. You could search for anything online and find anything you want. But that's where I stand on that. I feel bad for Capcom. But um, that being said, that being said, I, I will talk on a more uplifted note. What was revealed in this leak is pretty awesome stuff. You know, there are some games in there that. I didn't know about before some exclusive projects that are pretty cool that I'm looking forward to now knowing about them knowing very little about them but still looking forward to it's pretty sweet um, you know anytime you talk money and numbers and exclusives that companies have behind the scenes getting to see that is definitely uh, intriguing so you know it, it's a bittersweet thing because you live in the video game industry for that excitement of being shocked. But on the journalism side of things, you also do sometimes come across information that's, you know, special to you that you are able to share and sometimes receive information that unfortunately is false, but you don't know it going in. So it's kind of a risk in talking about it. So there's excitement in acquiring things specially for you. There's excitement in being a fan and learning things live. Uh, this has a little bit of excitement and learning in it, but it's kind of tarnished by how it was shared. You know what I'm saying? That's just the, the human in me, right? Let's be real. People are affected by this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Well, anyways, though. Cool stuff overall. Let me know what you thought of today's video game news. Happy birthday, Mr. Miyamoto. 68 years old. Here's to many more. What do you think about Bethesda and Xbox going forward? Congratulations to Alana Pierce once again. I'm happy for you, her, if you're not watching. And uh, pretty cool Super Mario update and the Capcom news. Let me know what you think of any of it. All right. Thanks for watching. This is Paul Gale Network signing out. Hope you all have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.